Hello everybody, good afternoon, Rose Thorne here. Today I am reacting to Foodie Beauty's live stream, which she is still currently on called Spending $60 on Uber Eats So Minty Can Complain. So for those who are wondering, what does she mean by the title? Well, Foodie Beauty is angry with Monty, who is Monty, he's got two uh, pages on YouTube, Monty After Dark and Stories from the Internet. And Foodie does not like Monty and the panels that he has on Monty After Dark. So Monty did a panel this morning uh, where he had a bunch of people on and Foodie actually made a community post which I hope that I can cover in this react a little bit later on after reacting to her video where she was going off on the people on the panel. Foodie, if you don't like Monty, if you don't like the panels, is a very simple solution. You don't have to watch. You don't have to listen. You can just stay in your own corner of YouTube and mind your business. But yeah, she was going off about Monty. She's also angry over the fact that yesterday Natter did a live stream where he was in an Uber or something with a female companion saying that was his new friend and the woman was attractive. And I'm sure that's also setting her off. So in true foodie beauty style, when she's angry at Natter, she will not go to Natter. She will rage at everybody else but Natter. So today she is going off. She did a brief live stream this morning. I'm very sorry I could not capture it because as soon as she was done, she journey deleted and I was on a phone call. But she's on this live stream, and so I want to react to it while it's in progress to capture as much as possible. So let me go ahead and just share the screen. And also, I would like to share stuff on Twitter from that live stream, just little, little highlight reels that people have captured on Twitter. So let's start with, where should we start with first? Okay, let's start over here because this happened earlier in the day. So Foodie Beauty posted this picture, which she deleted off of her community post. And it says, sleeping over at my friends. See you guys tomorrow, just sleeping. So there she is taking a picture of a man and he is perfectly asleep. And she decided to snap a picture of him sleeping. Foodie, do you know how creepy that is? To take a picture of a guy while he's sleeping? Now, I don't know if anything physical happened between yourself and this man. But it looks like he's in a position where he's not able to consent to you taking his picture and posting it all over YouTube. This is very, very inappropriate. I mean, if you thought this was some kind of flex taking a picture of a sleeping person it's not a flex it looks creepy and it looks very very wrong and if i were this guy and i saw my picture on the internet i would be very upset with you and giving you the riot act so yeah she did that what else did she do let me see here i lined up a few things oh this post from just Breezin today and for those of you who've been following foodie you know that lately Foodie Beauty, she just has a has an issue with garlic bread and just Breezin today. She keeps picking on them for some reason. Uh, for a while, she liked just Breezin, then all of a sudden she just started going off on just Breezin. So just Breezin posted this tweet saying, I heard Foodie Beauty brought up my daughter and I'm sorry, but that's taking things too far. I work hard so my daughter can have an amazing life. Many single moms work. Why am I any different? Say whatever you want about me, but leave my daughter's name out of your filthy mouth. I agree, Breezen. If Foodie has been talking about your daughter, that is completely inappropriate. It's one thing if she wants to say something about you as a reactor, but there's an unspoken rule that everybody should honor, and that's children off limits. Children off limits. Everybody knows that rule, I guess, except foodie. You know, talk about a person, but don't talk about their kids. 
Everybody knows this rule, children off limits. There's absolutely no reason to go after the young and the innocent. They've done nothing wrong. They've got nothing to do with this. I agree with you, Breezen. Foodie, leave her kid's name out of your filthy fucking mouth. See, I'm a little bit more rude than Breezen, but I'm, I'm echoing the same thoughts. Leave her kid's name and presence out of your filthy fat mouth. It's not right. It's not right to do that, to talk about her children. She is a single mother, and I applaud all single moms because you work hard and you provide for your children. My hat goes off to anyone who's a parent, whether you're a single mom, single dad. If you're a parent raising a child in the world, what it is today, it's difficult. My hat goes off to you. And if you're a parent and you're raising your kid right, take a bow. You deserve it. But I agree with Breezen. Don't talk about the kids. So what other clips do we have here? Well, that's that's the uh, that's the uh, panel. We'll cover that later. So here's food. And this happened with another guy. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Oh yeah, this clip has to do with uh matter and the charges that she tried to bring against him too um it happened with a few guys where they just like they think you're being playful or they're like oh you want to do this just try it just try it blah 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 they're pushy but to them they don't they, they don't think anything about it to us it affects them you know what i mean by that and i'm not saying it's okay but like i don't know do you know what i mean it's like i feel like there's like i don't know so for me i was like is it isn't it isn't it and i'm just like i don't know do you know what i mean i don't know I feel like a lot of times sexual partners are pushy and they don't realize they're like, and yes, they need to be told that, but you know, no, he's never like, okay, so what's her face said, the person in this case said that he, the minute he got in the hotel, he shoved her on the bed, give me your kitty. Number one, like, I've never known him to be like that. Like he never. Okay. You know what? I got some thoughts to this. I take offense to the fact that foodie has used DV and SA. She's monetized those things and she's made thousands of dollars. And she's brought up those topics multiple times and triggered so many people. I got issue with all of that, all of it. And I hate the fact that she's talking about this thing between her and Natter, like she's the victim. She's not the victim. In my opinion, my feeling as someone that I've been through essay and DV for real, nothing happened like that with her and Natter. But she is that person that if she's mad at you, she will say the most awful, awful, untrue things. And I think that's the case with Natter. I don't know about what happened with him in May. That's a whole separate issue that if something happened with May, I hope that she gets justice as she deserves. But in the case of Chantal, I don't think anything happened between her and Natter as far as the DV or the essay at, regarding the DV. She doesn't act scared around Natter. She literally goes to see him. Anybody who's been through DV, you are scared of your abuser. You're scared. And for someone who's been through SA, she'll get online and talk about what happened to her with no problem. I have yet to meet someone who's been through it. They can talk about it with no problem. And she does it repeatedly on a live stream to thousands of strangers. Also, if she's been through SA, why does she feel so free to show off her body in public, on camera? Again, if you've been through SA, would that be possible? I don't think so. I really don't think so. I think that she's a vindictive, evil, wrathful person, and she will lie on you to hurt you if you get on her bad side. Again, my opinion, my feeling. So what else do we have here? What else we got? Oh, know very little about me and my financial situation. I actually like fucking purposely made you guys off. Okay, you know? okay. You now this, this little clip, even though it's hard to hear, this is Foodie admitting that everything on her channel is pretty much a lie. 
that the story arcs that she comes up with, and that's what they are, are stories. And anybody who's ever read a book, when you're reading a story, you're reading something made up by somebody else. When you're watching Foodie Beauty, everything is made up. Everything is a lie. You can't take anything she puts out there as truth because none of it is true. It's all made up crap. And she admits that right here, right now in this clip. You also know very little about me and my financial situation. I actually like fucking purposely made you guys off central. And I let you because it makes me money. So she leads everybody on because it makes her money. You guys hear that loud and clear out of her own mouth. Now put what she just said with what she said before in Cuba about I'm going to manipulate the F out of you and then I'm going to come on camera and be sweet as pie and you're going to eat it up and you pretty much have who Chantal is and what her channel is about. It's just one big gigantic grift from start to finish. Foodie has said that her channel is all about her life, right? She said that. So does that mean her life is one big gigantic lie? Because it would appear so. It would appear that anything you hear or see on her channel is just, it's made up. There's nothing true or genuine or sincere about it. It's just all made up, you know, stuff or views. It's stuff for views. And that's something the reaction channels have been saying for the longest. This is bullshit. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. And here's, uh, here's evidence of one of her lies. She lies about her appearance. This is one of her edited pictures with the filters. This is the real her. You can't even trust that her appearance is being truthful. She lies about everything. Absolutely everything. Everything. What else we got here? To me, and this happened with another guy, too. Okay, I've already covered that. Let's get rid of that. Oh, this, is, this also has to do with Natter. Thankfully, I've already told the crowd you are clinically insane. Yeah, but are they just going to take my word on it? I don't even know if I said clinically insane. I didn't say clinically insane. No, I didn't say those words. So maybe know your facts before you talk. Actually, I said, and I was very mentally unstable. But yes, I did lie. I lied to protect him because I loved him. So I did it. Yes, I did it and I won't lie. <clears throat> so you lie on him to put charges on when you were mad at him, that when you were finished being mad, you lie to protect him. Again, another reason why you can't trust Booty. This one here, this one, she's so vile, she's so evil that when it suits her, she will lie on you and possibly put you in jail because she's mad at you or because you're with another woman and she doesn't want you to be. She's that kind of person that she will go that far to get back at you or get you away from somebody. I mean, just horrible, horrible person. So let's go over to her current live now and let's go from here. Porker, this guy is a dork with a dad bod. And he laughs like a fucking, he makes fun of me, like, really? She's talking about Monty. And what's funny is that she had a crush on Monty. Everybody knows it. She had a crush on Monty, but because she can't have Monty, she's going to put him down. Are people really shocked that a YouTuber tries to make money by keeping an audience engaged? Yes. They also still don't think YouTube is a job. Despite me having like earned like triple my pay, like quadruple any paycheck I've ever had. Excuse me, ma'am. You did not earn anything. You got on YouTube, you turned on your camera and you ran your mouth. That's not earning anything. Anybody can do what you do. Maybe there are lots of people that couldn't go to the bottom of the barrel like you have as far as the kind of content you offered. A lot of people would not go that far because they have morals and values. 
and because they're aligned in the sand, they will not cross, but anybody can get on camera on YouTube and run their mouth. But go off. His panels are black, like. You don't like the panels, don't watch. Nobody invited you there anyway. Dad bots are sexy? Okay. That's what his self-defense would be. Well, you know what? You're going to insult Monty's body. I saw Natter's body, even though I did not want to. It was kind of thrust upon me because I was in Gary Unfiltered's chat watching one of his live reacts, and Natter took his shirt off. Foodie. Really? I mean, you're going to insult Monty and Natter looking the way that he does? He looks awful. He looks awful. So you prefer a crackhead bod over a dad bod. I'm sorry, I'll take the dad bod any day. So maybe some people think 400 pounds, even though not 400 pounds, you are. people are sexy, but you look like a fucking idiot. Having a 400 pound person on your panel who's uglier than me, objectively, making fun of me. What? Good life. Whatever. <clears throat> when you're actually a hot ass bitch, then come at me. Until then, have several seats and don't break the chair. Thanks. <clears throat> that was no. Well, I mean, for some people. <clears throat> I know, gave him a view, but for now, I mean, where do these channels think they're gonna go? Like, they're only relevant when I'm messy. And even then, only to a certain extent. Like, he probably thinks he's gonna be FFG or whatever. Who, by the way, I still haven't gone after for bullying, but I will. Good luck with that. It's not a rage if you're defend of defending the abuse they give out. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I don't care. Tweety. <laughs> She's another hypocritical bitch. I'm tired of like bigger messes than me criticizing me. So what are you saying, foodie? That a person can only be a certain weight and talk about you? They have to be smaller than you or a size five or a size zero to have an opinion. A person can have an opinion and has nothing to do with their weight. I mean, you have an opinion and you're close to 500 pounds. So aren't you being a bit hypocritical saying that? Are you saying that people who are overweight or obese or morbidly obese are not allowed opinions? Get a life, but it's always that way. Happy people, who have their shit together, as messy as I am, I have my shit together and enough self-respect that I don't need to have a fucking reaction channel, not showing my face because I'm doing drugs on stream, criticizing other people for doing drugs, whatever. Who's doing drugs on stream? What reaction channel does drugs on stream? Because I haven't seen any. Every reactor that I've seen, they come on camera sober. Nobody does drugs on stream but you, foodie. Sitting there smoking your green and doing your edibles. Most channels might start to give advice and it starts into a pack of wild dogs. They're like literally like nobody's like why even have people like this on your panel? You just you don't have a constructed you have a trashy channel basically, Monty. You have a you just invite anybody up who just wants to make fun of me. There's no fucking valid. There's not many valid talking points that you try to leave talk about. What are we supposed to talk about, foodie? When people go up on his panel, 
what would be okay with you? What would be foodie approved? What are we supposed to do? Sit there and give constructive advice to you? What, what would be okay with you as far as the topic of conversation relating to you to Monty's panels? People give their opinions and feelings on the content that you yourself provide. And as far as giving you any kind of advice, even if that were true, even if the people were to go up on panel and say, oh, well, she needs to do this and she needs to do that, would you listen? No, because lots of people have given you advice on camera and off, and you have yet to take one sliver of that and do something with it. So why bother giving advice? Why bother being constructive when you don't listen because you're not interested? And you're obviously bothered, so now you just start making fun of me. You can't, you can dish it, but you can't take it. All the reaction can't channels can dish it, and they can't take it. I find that fucking funny. No, you can't take it. We have a thicker skin than you do. That's pretty obvious. You tried reacting to a few reaction channels, and each time you tried, you failed. Because you're not intelligent nor quick-witted enough to make a valid point or to do a proper roast. It's amazing. You've been on YouTube for as long as you have, and you're as soft as you are. You've got a very thin skin. You're so easily triggered and bothered over a panel on somebody else's page where you did not have to be and you did not have to pay attention. Again, you don't like it. Don't look. Don't pay attention. Really? <laughs> Hi, Joni. Hi, Steve. Can you respond to? <laughs> like literally, nobody even knows who these people are. Like, there's someone like with an old. They have like 500 subscribers. Like, when you have 90,000 subscribers, then come at me. Excuse me. Yeah, let's just talk about your 90K subscribers. Let's put the real numbers out there. Let's put some knowledge out there because knowledge is power. For those who look at Foodie's channel and you see that she has 90K subscribers, something you should know. Just because the numbers say 90K subscribers, it doesn't mean she has 90K active subscribers. A lot of those are dead accounts. YouTube still counts those towards the number. But obviously, you do not have 90K active subscribers because when you do a live stream, you get less than 2,000 people watching you. That's really sad. 90K subscribers, foodie, and you're lucky if you get 1,000 people watching you. Those numbers are not that great compared to smaller channels like Gary Unfiltered, that he's got a lot less than you and he gets more engagement. And people have a lot more fun over there. Obviously I'm doing something right. I don't have, actually, I'm not doing that great because for as long as I've been on YouTube, but <clears throat> I feel like once I start getting out of this fucking mess and actually being productive. When's that? We're, I don't blame anyone for that. Lack of success is on me. I'm lazy. I have no work ethic. Right. Yeah. Like I said before, you could have made a killing a while ago if you put your head on straight. If you had just, if you made the merch long ago and set up a merch store, if you made up a bunch of different platforms and kept up the content for each one of them, you could have made a killing, foodie. A killing. Have stuff put away in savings. Your taxes would be paid. Your car would be paid off. You might be driving a brand new car right now. All the time you spent on YouTube, all the money you've made, what do you have to show for it? You are morbidly, morbidly obese. Your health sucks. You got a car that's on its last leg. 
Your cats are neglected. I mean, you got nothing to show for, nothing at all. <clears throat> I cannot handle conflict. I know. I, I anymore. I think I'm just too fucking old for it. I used to watch my kid until I commented on the panel, basically making fun of you and the DV situation, and they came after me saying I was a beater. He talks a lot of shit about somebody who sits in his fucking room all day. He has no life experience. Come at me when you've fucking been in my shoes, asshole. Thank you. I don't think anybody wants to be in your shoes to be that unhealthy and you're doing nothing about it. You sit in a room like you are now eating, binging out on food, griping at the camera, because you would never say those things that you're saying to the people that you're saying about in person. You feel safe behind your camera. You're basically a keyboard warrior. You got the sword in your hand as long as you're not in front of the enemy. You get in front of the enemy and suddenly you drop your sword and you run away. At least people like obese to beast have fucking, they can talk on my, you know, they, I mean, they've been there. They're not rude. Like, that's a real critique channel, in my opinion. You can only wish your channel would be like that someday. I don't watch obese to beast. And I don't have the same views at all about that acceptance. It's not about accepting your weight. It's about not fucking hating yourself while you're working on yourself. Yeah, but you're not working on yourself except making yourself more unhealthy. <clears throat> there you go. Zachary Michael has 100,000 subscribers for a reason. He has a personality. That person personality is prison bread. Actually, I used to think that he has more of a personality, engaging personality than Monty. Absolutely. Monty going to court like he's a TMZ report. I would have been in that mode to catch the event. Wear jeans with long socks vibes. Understand <sighs> each other. They want to just be right. People don't have discussions. They want to just win whatever. They want to seem better than, and I know it's on YouTube. That's all it is. It's just image. <clears throat> like, even with Navar reaching out to him, being kind, and he repays me by fucking exposing all our messages. Yeah, I did that because you continually lie to me. You leave me no choice. You don't leave me a choice. I have to prove myself. I've proven myself with proof. You, you have a choice, though. Nobody forced you to to expose messages, foodie. So don't sit there and say you were forced to. Nobody forced you to do anything. This is your channel. You can do whatever content you want. You can put whatever you want on your channel. Nobody forced you to do anything. So please don't use that language. You've done none of that. You haven't shown anything. No receipts, nothing. Because you know I'm not lying. And instead of just admitting it and trying to be a better person, you blame me and abuse me verbally and say shit that's not true. Like, I'm done with people like this in my fucking life. I, I just don't want it anymore. God. I really don't. I'm full. I'm going to leave this for later. Maybe have one more potato. These potatoes are good. Are these Parisian potatoes? It's all about the money. Well, that's sad that people compromise their morals and integrity excuse me did, did that just come out of your mouth morals and integrity did those two words just come out of your mouth chantal you have no integrity and you have no morals and values and the way you live your life is proof of that 
that's your problem. You have no morals. You have no integrity. You have no values. Your life is devoid of meaning and substance. Your life is empty. If there was ever a definition of money can't buy happiness, it would be your life. You are the walking definition of that saying because that's all you've got is money. And that's a very slippery slope, having nothing but money in your life because that money, it won't hug you at night. It won't say nice things to you for free. All you have is that money. It's a, like I said, it's a very slippery slope because if that money disappears, you've got nothing. For money. Like I literally, literally come on here and act like myself. Like I don't do anything. Really, I don't do anything calculated. Like, yeah, I'll say, oh, I'll do it for money. But honestly, I could probably do, like if I really wanted to be like a normal YouTuber, I would, I'm not very clickbaity, like, I just, I'm very reactive. I say what's on my brain. I don't, I don't like plan shit. You know that I don't. Yes, you do. That's a bunch of bullshit. She does plan. You don't tell, you guys can't tell me that her and Natter and Didi, they don't have conversations where they, they plan shit. Like, oh, let's do this this week. You know, those conversations happen. And that's where all these story arcs come from. Um, oh, you're on my side? Okay, sorry to yell at you then. I'm just very like, why would you make content? <clears throat> yeah. But no, I think... I understand your frustration. I really do. I've never been anything but supportive. Okay, sorry, Angel's Beauty. I really apologize. <laughs> you know, I can feel good all day that I turn on this camera and I'm my fucking self. Thank you. Yeah, we see how you feel good. You're in a very expensive hotel room. And rather than enjoy being in the room and enjoy the change of environment, and get out and do things as you could, what are you doing? You're sitting in your room eating fast food, which you could do at home, and you're reaching at the reaction channels, which you could also do at home. You're not utilizing the environment for a positive experience. You just paid, I don't know, a few hundred dollars, $500, whatever it is you paid for that room. You paid a lot of money to do the same thing you could have done at the villa. When I was a kid, I always wanted to make money, picking my ass and farting, and I'm doing it. So for me, this is success, okay? My idea of success might not be your idea of success, but it's my idea. So I'm drinking cherry cot. It's two bucks. Black cherry cot. Like, seriously, somebody who wants to be an astronaut, are they going to go to somebody on Cirque du Soleil doing fucking back backflips and going... Why would you choose to do this with your life? Who gives a shit? Actually, I might have to. Jesus. What makes me really not... I don't know. This is what makes me question everything. Those messages. So, that's why I'm staying the fuck out of it. Thank you. We don't know Mimi Pondu. We're not going to know. We don't know what happened in that hotel room. So that's why I cannot speak on it. Nobody knows. But the messages I've seen, because he was all worried about it in bed talking about it. He's like, you know, I told you this American was coming to see me. She wanted to try my food. It happened anymore with me. And I have a right to do that. Period. So think what you want. Whatever happened, I know. And that's all that matters. I don't have to explain myself to random people on the internet. I shouldn't have it opened my mouth in the first place, but whatever. Here we are. <clears throat> I'm drinking black cherry cot. Only you and that are know the truth. No, I don't even know the truth. I wasn't there. Idiot.
You're on company time again, but you want to sue me and blame me for your job. You're on company time using my slippers to fucking slither your way into the living room. Another Jennifer Cruz. You know what, Chantal? You can just stop right there. Whatever hatred you say you have for Didi, it's obviously fake because you have a key to her apartment. And you were just over there the other day. We heard you walk in. We saw his reaction. We saw him mute the stream. And then we heard you and Didi talking. So you can you can stop it now. You can stop with the charade. It's over. Reason didn't respect him a lot, but um, he didn't make me feel like I guess I don't know. I was I I didn't feel like I really evaluated the situation what happened between us sexually, and I decided to go with it. It wasn't sexual assault for me because it just really didn't feel like sexual assault. And like, like it you know, I'm going to say something on that. If you claim that somebody's done essay on you more than once, and then you turn right around and you say, I exaggerated the claims. I'm sorry. It's a done deal. It's over. Because those who've been through it don't have to exaggerate anything. All they need is their truth. Felt more just like... We were, you can't experience, you can't compare your experience to hers. No, I know I'm not comparing it, but you know, because you don't worship him anymore. He does, okay, he cannot even get mad at that. Having a picture, like why would you take a picture of me kissing your feet then? He's like, oh, I want to prove it. Like every time I would go crawling back, he would humiliate me and make me feel like shit. And you kept going back. You kept going back. You kept going back. For someone who experienced humiliation and degradation, if it was bad, why did you go back over and over and over again? Why did you keep paying his way? It points in the direction of you really weren't humiliated. You really weren't degraded because you kept going back for more and more and more and more. I'm sorry if I have an experience that is truly humiliating, I'm not gonna go see that person or be part of that event ever again, but you kept going back. So what can we, the audience conclude, Chantal, except that maybe you have a humiliation degradation fetish and that's your jam. And maybe one of the reasons why you can't get, low, get let go of Natter is because he indulges you that way. And maybe you found nobody else that will indulge you that way. I know that's kind of twisted to think about for those of you in my audience, but there are different fetishes in the world. There are different things that people are into. And Chantal might be into that. I mean, she's certainly into the flashing and showing her naughty bits when nobody asked her to show them. And she's always talking about poop and, and obsessed with her bowel movements is it a is it a stretch to imagine that she might have those fetishes and maybe natter is someone that because he doesn't care about chantal he can do that stuff to her and it gets her going i know this is kind of a an adult conversation here but it's an honest question basically for leaving him or for going against him kiss my feet then and I'm sorry, I saw that picture. Girl, you looked into it. You were loving it. There was no disgust on your face. You were into it. Why would I put myself through that for nothing? People's true intentions, character and morals revealed. Yes. He's also been racist. Am I defending his racism? I'm a, what number one fan? Am I defending his racism? It's be in the new Saw movie, you friggin' weirdo. Oh, good. I'm happy for you, Jen. Rabbit 101. 101. Welcome to Rabbit Me, Rabbit Me. Those red flags don't show for a long time, and you don't always see them. What's obvious to you is not always obvious to someone else because I didn't have that fucking life experience. And 
neither do a lot of the critics. And that's why I don't like FFG, because she's full of fucking shit. She sits there every live stream obsessing about me and Koki when you're clearly a fucking drug addict yourself. Excuse me. No. Absolutely not. Let me just stop you right there. Number one, she is not obsessed with you. She is simply reacting to your content. Number two, she's not a drug addict. I have never once seen Frenchie on camera intoxicated or under the influence of anything. She comes on camera, she reacts to you in a very energetic, passionate way. And I seriously doubt that if she was intoxicated or under the influence that she would be able to do that. So you're wrong there, Chantal. Although I have seen you, yes, you ma'am, get on camera intoxicated and drunk and under the influence of different chemicals, whatever they might have been. I'll never forget that one stream you did where you were so drunk that you went catatonic for a minute, looking like you were having a mini heart attack or a stroke, and then you ran to the bathroom and projectile vomited everywhere. Yes, that was you that did that. You're the one that gets on camera acting the fool and oftentimes you're acting the fool under the influence. So don't point a finger at other people saying they're under the influence. When you get on YouTube with your intoxicated content. So drug addict shaming, nice. Allowed on YouTube, how? I don't know. But we'll see about that. Also, you've, you've supposedly... You've supposedly been in such a bad, abusive relationship. So you know what it's like and you fucking shame. That's all you do for money. So enjoy your money while it lasts. Because no. Yeah. Are you angry because she's probably making as much money a month or probably more than you? I think you are. I think you're jealous of that. Big time jealous. And yes, Frenchie has talked about being in an abusive relationship. But you know what, Chantal? She got out of it. She left and she started over. And she's done well for herself. You keep going back to your supposed abuser. Over and over again, you can't tear yourself away. And your life keeps going downhill. So don't bring up Frenchie's story. You can't relate. She's a fighter and she is a survivor. And probably will always be. You can't relate to that. You can't. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know. She's got some weird jealousy issues or something. I don't know what her fucking problem is. Like people like that, that that obsessed is weird. Or again, like everything else in life, money motivated. It's such an empty existence being motivated only by money. I don't care if I fucking need loans. You're money motivated. You have got such obsession and greed over money. It's ridiculous. Your greed and obsession for money has led you to create these toxic story arcs that are ongoing and you just won't stop. Your obsession for money has led you to ruin your own body, ruin your own health, drag everybody down because you're obsessed with the almighty dollar. And that almighty dollar is not going to save you if you eat to the point where you have a heart attack or a stroke. All it would take to take you out, Chantal, is one major medical emergency that would completely tank your channel if something happened to you and you ended up in the hospital for a few weeks or you had a partial stroke that paralyzed half your body or messed up your brain that's all it would take but rather than see the red flags in front of your face and do something about them you just keep going because i guess in your mind as long as something major doesn't happen you're okay you're not okay. You're not okay at all. If I'm not, like financial shit, oh, I don't care. I really don't. I can't be bothered. I need to, but I don't understand people whose life goal is to invest money and make more money. Boring. Who gives a fuck? That's stupid. You invest money to make more money because by doing that, 
you are able to live comfortably. There's an old saying, don't work harder, work smarter. And as you get older, that becomes important. You make money, the best thing you can do is invest it, invest it into yourself, invest it into a business. And that way, when you get older and you don't want to work, you don't have to work, the money is working for you. It's just smart thinking. When I was broke for a couple of weeks, I fucking like, honestly, at first it's, it's fucking challenging to be on a budget, whatever, who cares? Oh, well, like it's more entertaining than like, I don't know. Maybe I just have an allergy to being responsible. You, yeah, you don't like hard work. And, uh, dead and offered my life. So you twist that into mocking them? Suck my fucking testicles. And suck my friggin' Ew, ugly teeth. Gross. I have a right to sit on there and talk about me all fucking day. Suck it. I'm done. I'm done. If I want to rent a hotel room, if I want to take out a fucking loan and rent whatever I want, it's my fucking prerogative. It's none of your fucking business. You make it our business, though. You're renting a, a hotel room, but you're not doing it privately. You're putting it on YouTube for content. As far as you doing the payday loan, you talk about that too. How would we know about that unless you talked about it, foodie? You come on camera, oh, my paycheck, my it's already spoken for before I spend any of it. You talk about all this stuff. You gaslight everybody. You set them up to have opinions and feelings that oppose yours. And then when they do, you rage at everybody. If you did not talk about nor show certain things on your channel, we'd have nothing to talk about, would we? We wouldn't be able to comment. But you put every single thing about your life on YouTube. Not too long ago, you even brought out your medical records and made that into content. So you were reading all the things that were wrong of you and you revealed that Natter gave you not one, not two, but three STDs, allegedly. You brought that up. You did. So people aren't supposed to comment on that. You don't want to say things about certain things, then don't bring them here. This is not your journal. This is not live journal. This is not a blog. You want to keep things private, write it in a notebook. Don't bring it on YouTube. This is a public platform. And once you put it out in front of the public, they have the right to say whatever they want, wherever they like, whether it's on your channel or on a panel or anywhere else. And if you don't like the opinions, don't fucking watch. And don't listen. Stay away. Stay out of places where you're not invited. Simple. You don't have my financial fucking history. You don't have a right to it. If you do have it, you're sick in the head. Everyone has their limits. Why do they act brand new? Exactly. Thank you, Laura Lee. I love when you stand up for yourself. Thanks for the kind super chat. <sighs> yeah. I just had a little bit of money in blue kiss. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just being a smart ass. I'm not a fucking millionaire. Obviously, there's YouTubers who make so much money. Yeah, you're not one of them. Yeah, you you make oh you make good money, foodie. I'll give you that. If you're making between seven thousand and under twenty thousand a month, that's good money compared to what normal hardworking people make. Once you go out and earn their living, you're making good money. But here's the embarrassing part. You don't have anything to show for it. Imagine that. Somebody who's 38 years old, make it 10 grand plus a month, ain't got nothing to show for it. Not even a brand new car. Embarrassing. Shameful. A lot of them, a lot of people, but a lot of YouTubers, it's, it's not fair. It's just like a lot of it, I think, is luck. Because when you look at it this way, there's so many YouTubers who, like, there's so many creative people who put a lot of work in. And it's like their life dream to make it. And you know what? You got lucky. You got lucky making your channel long ago, and you wandered into the mukbang community. 
and you utilize that to the fullest to grow your channel and it did grow. And because of that, you have an income. Had there been no mukbanging, no mukbang community, you'd be lost right now. Because what do you do? You get on camera, get high, eat a bunch of food, act the fool. You got nothing else but that. And I literally just like act like an asshole and make yeah. money. But I feel like I also put my life out there. And I do try to think of ways I can be more creative. I'm just stunted right now because when I have something that's bugging me, I obsess about it to, to the point of there needing to be some kind of resolution. And I, that's the problem with your life. Your life can be summed up in one single word, obsession. Obsession. If there was ever a word for a person like Flutie, it would be obsession. Because she gets obsessed with people, with food. Everything that she likes becomes an obsession at some point. And obsessions are dangerous. They ruin one's life. They are not healthy. Obsession of or anything or anyone is not healthy. Being in balance is healthy. So when are you going to stop being obsessed and get into balance? And I think that's why I would always go after him and after him. And like, because I relied on that validation from him, those breadcrumbs, that fucking like, why are you doing this to me? Why are you treating me like this? Like, I need answers, you know? Chasing the Kaylee, <laughs> what brace should we be? Gary has five chins. He's sleeping with life by Jen. What? What? No, he's not. She's talking about Gary unfiltered. Gary has a fiance, and Gary's a great person. He's not sleeping with life by Jen. That's ridiculous. Why did you delete your video? Yeah, why did uh, you? Make it make I sense. Know. I don't know. I just, I, I guess if I rage, sometimes I delete them because I don't want people to report me. <laughs> Let's go back to Cuba and find Dennis. No, Dennis. Yeah, that's another thing, Miss Moneybags. You sit there and you talk about how broke you are. You would be less broke if you let your live streams stay up, but half of them you delete. So there goes half the money you could have had had you left them up. But you like playing that cat and mouse game with the reaction channels and YouTube. Let me just delete all of the interesting content and leave all the boring shit where I'm not really doing anything. And that's all there is to talk about. Dennis makes me wish I had a fucking penis. What? I would rather have sex with the bench outside of my hotel room than have sex with Dennis. I would rather hunt the ashtray in the log. People maybe leave those who lift you up and then those who will drag you down. Annabella Costa, a member of two months. I'd be their chick stocks here. Well, I know it's hard to understand because I you don't see like the whole relationship. You're not in it, Tweety. You don't have a relationship, you dunce. You're not committed to him. He's not committed to you. You have a financial agreement or he, you pay him and he hangs out with you and does whatever with you, even after several months of talking, you're still doing it. That's not a relationship. So you don't know the whole situation. So how can you evaluate a whole where I should be right now? I know that. God has a plan for everybody. He don't know what to do with you. You're lost. Yes, I see those things too down under now. But I believed him at one point. Yes, I did. And her too. She swore on her mother. You guys don't understand what they tell me. That's what I'm saying. You don't know down under. Okay? So calm down with your fucking shit. One day you will find a guy who loves you for who you are. Worship the fuck. And laugh at your farts. Yeah, good well, luck with that. Kevin is really my fault. He's like the cat that we're really on the outfit. He's so nice. It says anything to get your financial support. Hello. Yeah. It really sucks being in love with somebody like that. 
Yeah. Her mother was a clock attack away from the grave. How could she swear in her mother's life? She she did. I never, I swear on my mom, but she was tipsy. I we never slept together. But then when he lied to her and we were in Gatlin together and she called and she's like, Matter, I don't care. I don't care anymore. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't care. And he's like, What don't you care about? Were you gonna tell? Were you gonna and then she sent me that message read between the lines? Mm-hmm. And then this this thing with Jennifer Corvina, like you're cheating on me left, right, and center, and then you don't expect me to be mad. And then, you no, know, it's because I accuse him of that, it's attacking his character. Then he'll go online and be like, she's crazy. You know, sorry about that, y'all. I had a phone call. Let's keep going. I mean, oh, there was never a relationship. It's the only way he can disarm me. <laughs> Kaylee. That was a long explanation, eh? Dramatic? Yeah. Hi, Tiffany. Or something. No, he did say I love you a lot of times too, but well, I was some of these documentaries on people are freaking funny. Or watch fiction. And Chubby McSue's. That's for cleaning. Complimentary toothbrushes, Villanita. <laughs> you can words called Putin on Putin. I want to feel low. I feel like he's doing that to make me jealous. I don't know. Okay, I think we've seen enough of this react. I try to get through it as quickly as possible. So before we head out, let's go to the comments because I'm sure there are a few. Let's see if I can refresh and get them. See? Okay, let's see, what do the people have to say? Uh, Lemon Pixel says, when pe hundreds of people are telling you one thing, but you still think you are right, millions of people go through such things a year and eventually move on. Unless you are mentally disturbed and go full out for revenge and to win in on their minds. Uh, Agatha says, nattering when you're in a new relationship sleeping in the same bed with a male friend. I'm not dumb enough to fall for that. Hope Kevin sees this. Well, I don't know what happened between her and this guy, if anything did happen. Uh, it could be a case of the two of them just hanging out and she got high and had to spend the night and she just took a picture to make Natter jealous. I mean, again, I don't know if anything physical happened between herself and the guy in the picture, but it doesn't seem like it's anything serious. Uh, Josephine says, stop complaining and saying you are having money issues. You want sympathy? That's a joke. You have stopped to look at what you are doing with what money you have left. Yeah, I don't have any. If Chantal goes completely broke, I don't feel any sympathy for her. She's making a lot of money. And if she spends every single dime before payday, that's on her. Chantal's Walmart scooter says you spent all that money hoping Koki would join you, fool. Yeah, she got that nice room, and I bet she thought that Natter would get tempted and spend time with her, but it didn't happen. Let's see. Uh, Helen Helen says, oh, you are annoyed because he lied about meeting May, but you don't know what happened. As you said, you lied for him, but because she's older than you, you're mad because he went behind your back. Got you. But the whole situation, it's hard to know what to believe, who's saying what, but that's it for the comments for right now. So let's go on to the community post where she went after Monty's panel saying Dork literally had a fatter person on panel. Yeah, fat and body shame me. Okay, Dad, Bob, Monty. A hot ass bitch, please have several seats. So there were several people on panel and you were going after a woman of a bigger size. Why? Because she's bigger? Chantal, you are the same size or maybe bigger than she is. 
So there you are, a morbidly, morbidly obese woman attacking another woman who is obese. You don't see a problem with that. You don't see how wrong that is. That's completely wrong. But let's get into the comments of that. Oh. Did she delete it? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She deleted that post. Boy, her block and delete finger is active today. So I guess we won't get into the comments there. So I guess that's it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this React video. If you have, please like it, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.